Welcome to this session on how to make a super simple time block schedule. So we're going to talk about time blocks and what they are, and then we're going to get to the nitty gritty. First up, time blocks are kind of the uh, opposite of an hourly schedule. An hourly schedule is like 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11, this is what we're doing. Time blocks allow you to chunk out your day and your tasks, and they give you urgency and flexibility. It's really cool. What's really great about time blocking is you're going to be ta putting together like tasks, so you're batching your things, you're not going back and forth doing things. You're going to pre-assign what you're going to be doing, and you're going to theme them out. And what you're essentially saying with the time block is that instead of this, I will do the dishes by the end of the day, right? We say that all the time. What happens? Midday, 5 p.m., 7 p.m., it's time to go to bed, the dishes aren't done because there's no urgency. We're going to say, I will do the dishes by the time this block ends, right? This block from 12 to 3. So it's like, I can choose when in my time block it happens, but I need to have it done before the time block ends. So you see how you have your urgency, but you have flexibility. One of the struggles that I noticed when I started time blocking was I thought that everything had to be done in a certain order. Well, if I wrote down dishes before laundry, I had to do the dishes first. But what I found was some days I didn't want to do the dishes and I would stare at the dishes and I would use that to procrastinate doing anything. Whereas instead, when I started to give myself the freedom to say, actually, I'm just going to do the laundry first and I'll go back to the dishes. I was making progress. So you understand what we're doing here. We're going to block and chunk out your day, theme it so that you can make actual progress. So when we're doing our time blocks, we've got a couple steps we are going to work on. And we're going to think about an ideal day right now. So again, pick a day that's more um, traditional, follows a more like more predictable of a day. All right. And you're going to start with mapping out a time block. I want you to look at your um, schedules and I want you to start to say, what are my blocks? Now, your blocks are probably going to be around your life events. And so here I give the example of like work or camp or school or whatever. Block that out. I think that the perfect time for blocks are between two, uh, I would say actually three and four hours. If you can keep your blocks three to four hours, you're going to hit a really good sweet spot. When you get less than two, you're back to hourly scheduling. When you get more than five, it's just too much space. So make your blocks from the time you wake up, you know, from breakfast to lunch, lunch to snack, snack to dinner. Now in this example, you can see I have a big chunk. This is if maybe you're at work all day, you might want to block that out. But then when we get to the nitty gritty, I would break this in half and I would say, okay, we've got two work chunks. You're going to have to customize. But step one is, what are they? I'm going to give you an example of mine. So my blocks are five to nine, nine to 12, 12 to three, three to eight, and eight to 11. They're not all traditionally three to four, but they work for me. Now, once we've got them done, this is where a lot of people get time blocking, but here's a game changer. We're going to theme it out. So you can see here where we've kind of mapped out our blocks, or you can visibly see them. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to use what I call theming. So I'm going to show you how to theme. What I want you to do is to pick a general theme for each of your time blocks. Um, this will tell our goals where to go. How many times have you said, I don't know where I'm supposed to do this. I don't have the time to do this. And a lot of times it's because we've not pre-identified where it's supposed to fit. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to pick a theme. Now, your theme is not saying, I will only do these things during this block. Your theme is saying, this is where I will focus on these things. So here are some examples. From seven to nine in this example is self-care time. It's not saying from seven to nine, the only thing I'm doing is my self-care task. It's saying, hey, I want to get my Bible reading, I want to get my workout done, and I want to get my journaling done. This is where it's going to go. Do I still need to get my kids ready for camp and get us out the door? Yes, but this is saying this is the place it's going to go. This is a traditional day, but what you can do is you can take five of these, make Monday through Friday schedules, Look at your whole week and say, hey, as long as I have one errands block in the week, I'm good to go. That's like all I need. And you can personalize and customize it that way. Once you've got your themes, it's time to put them in. But I want to hit home on this real quick. 
Not every day has to be the same. Not every block has to be the same. You can customize it as much as you want. But what's key here is you start with doing one day at a time, and then you say, hey, do we have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, Tuesday, Thursday? Again, this works great if you're homeschooling or your kids are home for, for camp. You can really make your blocks look different, all right? But the important part is if you have the themes there, now you know where to put the thing. If you don't have the themes, how often do we say, well, I'm going to do this or, well, I'm going to get that done, and we don't actually get it done. A couple things I want to um, encourage you not to forget inside of your blocks. Um, these are going to help you make your blocks customizable and work. As you can see in this example, are they beautifully like back to back, you know, like seven to nine, nine to four, whatever, four to eight. Yes, but it's going to run over time. So a couple things you might want to think about while you're making your blocks are transition time. So do you have something to say, hey, we're going from one block to the next? Um, this could be a quick pickup, a snack time, a walk, a little mental break for you. You also want to make sure you have some buffer in there because guess what's going to happen? You're going to overplay in yourself. I know, I know. You're like, no, I won't. You will. You're going to put too much in your blocks. So do you have any buffer time to catch those things? Well, I have these three tasks on my list and one of them didn't get done. Where does it go? Give yourself some buffer. And the other thing you're going to want to make sure you have is what I call thought catcher time. So twice a week I plan two 30 minute blocks inside another block that I don't do anything in. I, I leave them completely blank. Now what goes there in real time? All the stuff I forgot to do. It's where I make the phone calls for the doctor or I run the errands I forgot or I do the things that, that kind of held over. So I think when you're making your overarching blocks, it's really important to add in these things where they're not going to look perfect. Your day is not going to go from 9 o'clock to 11.59 every day, you know, inside that one block. You have to be willing to... Uh, be flexible with it. And so make sure, ask yourself, write it out. Do I have any places where I'm leaving it blank? Because did you know that just because a planner doesn't have a line, has a line in it, you don't have to fill it up? I know it's sarcasm, but come on, friends. We do this. We over plan. We add a million things in. But guess what? It just isn't needed. You can add white space in and allow yourself gaps because what else happens? Stuff gets put on our plates. We get stressed out. And then we say, we don't care about the schedule at all. You've gone through. You've blocked out. You've maybe made a theme or two. Now it's time to fill it up with your goals. Here's the thing. When we traditionally schedule ourselves, what do we do? We add in everything that everybody else needs. And maybe you've seen this big rocks example, right? I've seen it where, um, I heard it from Franklin Covey, um, but you know, a professor sits in front of his class and he, and he says, I'm gonna put these big rocks, and he puts these big rocks into the jar. And he says, is it full? And they say, uh, yes, it's full. And then he throws these little pebbles in. And we can start to see where you can fit all the other little pebbles in. But here's the thing. If we start with our pebbles, if we start with all the tiny things that everybody wants for us, we don't have time for the big rocks, which are our priorities. So what you need to do when you're scheduling is not say, where does everybody else need me? What are all the tiny tasks I got to get done? But pause and say, where can I fit in time for me? Where can I fit in time for my goals? Because if you put the tiny pebbles first, and those are all the tiny tasks everybody needs for you, your goals, the big rocks, they're always going to go last. I want to talk to you now about how you use your time blocks and you schedule big rocks first. You let your goals and your priorities go first, and then you fill it in. And I promise you, I know that it feels like you won't have enough time for it, but you will. You will if you do it strategically. So how do we do it? How do we put in our big rocks first and let the little pebbles fill us around the way? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a plan for the week. When you do this, it lets you anchor into your vision. It'll help you um, have time to pivot and will also be the place where you fit in time for you. So the first steps 
is to go into the time blocks you've just made and I want you to write down all the things you can't change, all the appointments, all of those things that have crept up for you, but you know you got to get done. Kids got to go to soccer practice. You've got to go to the doctor. You've got work. We put those in first because we cannot change them. Three to five days out of the week, I want you to put in 15 minutes for one of your micro priorities or goals. Now, I'm never going to recommend seven days a week. I just think that is a way to set yourself up for failure. So instead, can you look at your week and say, I would like to put in time for my goals. I want to put in time to declutter. I want to put in time to um, go for that walk. I want to put in time to read that book. And I want you to look at the time block schedule you made and ask yourself, in what theme does this fit? And this is where you're going to tell it where to go. So if I know that I want to go for a walk every day, that fits nicely into my self-care block, which I pre-identified for the mornings. I'm going to write that. 15 minutes of reading. That's it, all right? 15 minutes of reading. Great. I have a goal that's maybe um, a decluttering goal. I'm going to put that in that five to eight block where I decided I was going to work on our chores around the house. You see how it kind of fits your theme. And you're going to say, which days do I want to do this? Which days make sense? Only 15 minutes, friends. We're not trying to do the whole project now. It's 15 minutes a day for you. You're worth more than that, right? Once we've got that in, we're going to work on our routines. All right, I want to have a good cleaning routine. So I want to work on that. Where does that fit? Oh, it works in my chores block. I'm going to put it there. Oh, I want to have a good routine around relationships where maybe every single day I text a, fr a different friend to check in. Where should I do that? Oh, that fits in my relationship block. So you see how we start with our themes because it tells us where to put our thing. And now I want you to add one routine and I want you to focus on a small piece of the routine. Where does that fit? Let's add it into our day. Let's add it into our plan. Once we've got that, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing for you. See how your planner is starting to get filled up. It's not the end of the world. It's getting filled up. But can we add one more thing? And that's a little bit of a growth. I find that with the people I work with, if they do this, if they go ahead and add in this time for learning and growth three to five days a week, they start to believe that they can do it. They start to believe that it's possible to change their mindset around their goals and around their schedules. We mapped your time blocks out. We themed your time blocks. So we're telling things where to go. You can decide where your learning goes based on your themes, right? We added in the things to your schedule that you can't change. And now we're adding in just three tiny things for you. 15 minutes for your goals, 15 minutes for a habit, and 15 minutes for learning and growth. Look at your planner now. It's filling up, but is it full? No, because your big rocks went first. You still have all the time for everything else that everybody needs from you. But instead, we went a little backwards and we said, let me put me first. So now we fill in the rest, right? Now here's the one thing I do want to recommend. I aim to have no more than three micro tasks per block that I'm focusing on. Now, do other things get done? Yeah, like I don't write down clean up lunch because it's just a habit we have, right? But when I'm saying three micro tasks, that's three focused things that are 15 minutes or less. This way you're not over planning. Now, is that all I'm doing in my three hour period? No, but I want to make sure I have three micro tasks per block. So at least I'm focusing on my priorities instead of continuing to push my priorities off. So you see how it all fits in. It's intentionality, but grace. It's urgency, but flexibility. Get the three micro tasks done before the block ends. And it gives you the freedom to say, what does this day feel like? Does my kid need me? Is somebody sick? Where are we at? But the And the flexibility, right? But it gives you the urgency of saying, I want this done by the end of this time period, all right? So a couple things I want you to ask yourself about these blocks as well. Do you know what you're supposed to be doing? What are your kids doing? This is really key during this time period. And what will it look like when it's established? I want you to take some time this week, this weekend, the next few weeks, rewatch this session, ask yourself a million questions and say, how will this look when it's completed? You're not going to work on it all at once, but you're going to at least know where you're going. You need to know your vision to, you know, get it in action. And the other thing you have to do, though, is you need to get some baseline data. So before you make your vision, what I also want to encourage you to do, I feel like I'm giving you a lot of homework today, I want you to do a time inventory. This is going to allow you to know a couple things. It's going to ask you, am I planning too much in this block? 
does this task that I want to fit actually make sense in this theme? Am I having places where I'm not strategic with my time or are there places I can combine tasks? So while this principle we taught about time blocking, like I said in the beginning, I wanted you to be able to take and run with it. I wanted you to be able to learn the basics and start. There's a lot more to it. It's pretty nuanced. There's a couple tiny things that'll help you. But I think if you make in a vision for it, and if you do your time inventory, you see where you're at, you're really going to be able to take this time blocking that I taught you today in this session and start. You can make your blocks, you can theme them, and you can fill it all in.